Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the second meeting of 2020 of the Committee on Scottish Government's Handling of Harassment Complaints. Could I ask members to ensure that notifications are turned off on their devices and remind you all to leave a few seconds between contributions to ensure the broadcasting happens. The first agenda item, agenda item one, is to ask members, as is normal practice with parliamentary committees, if they agree to take item three in private, and that is to consider its work programme. I have agreement. Thank you very much. And we will now go on to agenda item two, which is the approach to the committee's inquiry. I think it is worthwhile at this point to restate the remit uh, of this committee. And this committee's remit is to consider and report on the actions of the First Minister, Scottish Government officials and special advisers in dealing with complaints about Alex Salmond, former First Minister, considered under the Scottish Government's handling of harassment complaints involving current or former ministers and procedure and actions in relation to the Scottish Ministerial Code. And what we will have to do is approach to this inquiry. I will take contributions from members in the order that we agreed before the committee, which is alphabetically by surname, but I do want to provide a public update on our progress since our last public meeting in February, and indeed since the conclusion of the criminal trial of Alex Salmond in March. Since then, we have been in correspondence with the Scottish Government regarding deadlines for the provision of information, all of which is published on our websites. And I know that members will wish to comment on this process. The Scottish Government has now confirmed it understands the deadlines we have set in our most recent letter to the Permanent Secretary, which means that we should receive some information over the summer recess ahead of our return in August. What was agreed was that by 22 June, a written statement plus supporting documents in respect of the development of the Scottish Government's procedure for handling harassment complaints about current would be received. By mid-July 2020, we wish a written statement plus supporting documents in respect of information about the judicial review. And by the end of July, we want a written statement plus supporting documents in respect of how the Scottish Government handled specific complaints under the harassment procedure. And if that is not possible, the committee has requested an explanation of why, in fact, this is the case. I can confirm that the first tranche of information in relation to the development of the policy has been received and that the committee will publish what it can of this information as soon as possible. Under our work programme discussion later, there will be various pieces of housekeeping for the committee to consider and agree, and these decisions will be listed in full in the minute of the meeting. So That should provide further detail and clarity on the committee's approach to the inquiry and the handling of information provided to the committee. We will also be invited to consider a written statement which confirms how we plan to handle evidence during the inquiry. Given the sensitivities and the absolute confidentiality of the information we will receive, this will give anyone interacting with the committee a clear understanding of how we will treat evidence received and how we will take evidence. And Once there is committee agreement to this, we will post it on our website. I'm obviously very keen to allow members to express their views on the progress so far and where we expect to go once recess finishes in August. So I'll hand over first of all uh, to our deputy convener, Margaret Mitchell, before calling members in the previously agreed order. I remind you again to provide a few seconds pause between contributions to allow the broadcasting team to operate the appropriate microphones. And I call first of all, please, Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Deputy Convener. Can I say at the outset that I'm particularly pleased that since the Parliament was formed last year, 20th of February, we had our first meeting, the committee has been able to meet in private uh, regularly over last year and um, again this year. And the whole reason for doing that was to make sure that we didn't stand still when there were concerns about sub judice issues and um, other confidentiality issues, and that we were able to seek to collect information and um, background information which would help us really hit the ground running when we've got to the stage we are today and we can have 
our first formal in um, public meeting. Um, a lot of the information that we, we have sought has been from the Scottish Government, and I think it has been a frustration that today a lot of the deadlines that we have set have not been met. So I think it's entirely appropriate that the committee hears from the permanent secretary as the first witness and that we hear um, exactly reasons why that should be and anything else that she has to say. And of course, from that, then other witnesses and other um, decisions will be taken. More generally, uh, convener, you, you mentioned the committee's remit. And in addition to that, we know that complaints range back to 2008 and between 2008 and 2014. So I think it's entirely um, reasonable that the committee goes back and looks at the development of policy in handling these complaints from fairness at work, um, how this was implemented and how it was reviewed. Uh, thereafter, then, um, I think members will, will contribute about um, the witnesses or how we deal with other information in more recent events. And that will, of course, be uh, dictated by the evidence we receive. So we may have a good idea of where we're, we think we're going. That could change quite dramatically as we continue. And just one last thing I'd like to, to contribute and see, um, convener, is this is uh, a committee with a very important task about it. It's looking at um, and involving the actions uh, of officials and the most um, powerful people in the land. And therefore, it's essential that when we do meet, then we meet in a way that allows us to do our um, our job efficiently and effectively, and not be shoehorned into looking at when there's a room available or when members can make it. And I think that's something that going forward the committee will need to look at to ensure that we can carry out looking at our remit, um, as I say, effectively and efficiently. Uh, thank you. Uh... Margaret, I'm going to have first of all, please, Alistair Allen, followed by Jackie Bailey. Thank you very much, convener. I would certainly echo what's been said about the importance of the, the committee's uh, remit and the need um, for us to, to keep collecting uh, information. Um, I think we, we have reached a point where we are ready, I would suggest, and I think everyone else would probably say the same, to, um, to hear from, from some of the, the witnesses, the main witnesses after the summer. I think it's reasonable too to say that um, the date when Parliament comes back in August is, is probably the time for us to, to set about uh, doing that. And um, we've already heard too that the permanent secretary is, is likely to be amongst those witnesses early on, uh, and I think we'll we'll decide who the other witnesses should be in, in the normal way that committees do. So I'm not sure I have much more to add to that other than to say that we we're ready, I think, to get um, setting about doing our work uh, when Parliament returns uh, in August. Uh, thank you, Alistair. Can I have Jackie Bailey followed by Donald Cameron? Thank you very much, Convener. Um, and I don't want to rehearse what you and the Deputy Convener have already said to help set the context here. Um, but I think there are other issues of detail that, that we do need to consider. Firstly, having ingathered evidence from the Scottish Government, and we will continue to do so over the summer. There are, of course, other people that we should gather evidence from, um, and I do recollect us writing, for example, to the First Minister um, looking for hard copy or electronic records, um, both in terms of personal telephone messages um, and also copies of emails. Um, I believe we also, we've certainly discussed it, um, talked about uh, doing the same for the SNP because at some point there was discussion about SNP emails being used between ministers and special advisers. So I think that would be helpful. And of course, from Alex Salmond, as a consequence of the information he will have from the judicial review. Um, so in terms of witnesses, you know, I don't want to again rehearse a long list, but, but uh, as others have noted, the first minister, the former first minister, um, are likely to be invited, um, as indeed are people involved with the political meetings between both the first minister and the former first minister. I'm also keen, convener, to explore whether we can have the two former um, permanent secretaries, because they will give some helpful context as to the culture and the development of this policy. But we will discuss that in more detail um, later on. 
Can I turn quickly to the practical arrangements? Because I'm conscious that by the time we come back in August, we're still likely to, to have social distancing in place. Um, I don't think the work of this committee can be conducted on a virtual basis, although we've managed admirably so far. Um, I do think there is a need to meet in person, and I would certainly favour a programme of weekly meetings or whatever frequency you determine is suitable. Um, but on the basis that, you know, as a committee, if we are to meet in person, I think we would struggle to do so in the existing committee rooms, and therefore I would favour us um, making a bid for time in the chamber to allow us all to be present together along with the clerks um, to ensure that, that there is complete transparency and engagement with what the committee does. Um, and finally, and I will stop on this point, convener, um, can I just seek some clarification or ask you to do so on our behalf? Um, at the weekend, we saw a member that was sent to civil servants about an independent review, as well as the First Minister's own referral of herself to, um, you know, against the ministerial code. Um, could I check? This is the independent review that was stopped at the point of, I think, the judicial review, if not the court case. Um, and it would be helpful to clarify the timetable that they're operating to, whether it is independent and external, um, or whether it's an internal exercise. I think that would be useful for the committee's information. Thank you, convener. I'll certainly uh, get some clarification on that for the committee. And we now go to Donald Cameron to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, convener. Uh, can I just um, echo what Jackie Bailey just said about the importance of this com committee meeting physically as, as soon as possible uh, in August, um, in whatever way uh, is deemed suitable by, by, by Parliament and by the members of this committee. Um, I'd like to address uh, two issues, um, evidence and documents. In terms of evidence, Many uh, people have already spoken about the witnesses uh, who uh, should be uh, called before the committee. Um, in terms of uh, that, I'd like to request that the committee at least publishes an initial list of witnesses very shortly, uh, later today or indeed in the next few days. Uh, but my other and main point about evidence is to suggest and actually request that the committee should take sworn evidence, evidence on oath, um, we are able to do this. It's provided for in Section 26 of the Scotland Act and in Standing Orders Rule 12.4.2. And it's a case simply of you, convener, administering an oath or affirmation uh, with each witness that comes before us. And the reasons for that uh, are twofold, in my view. It seems absolutely imperative that the evidence we get is as accurate as can be, uh, and we need the opportunity to test both its credibility and its veracity not least because we're likely to get conflicting versions of events and there will be disputed areas of fact. And secondly, we are, as has been said, dealing with the very serious matters involving the highest echelons of the Scottish Civil Service and the conduct of very senior ministers past and present. Uh, taking sworn evidence uh, underscores the gravity of the subject matter of this inquiry and would ensure we get the best uh, possible evidence. Secondly, turning to documents, I think we all understand that because of the, the criminal trial uh, and the pandemic, uh, that has meant that our time frame has been affected. But there have, in my view, been very regrettable delays in terms of the production of evidence. And I do feel it crucial we get relevant information as soon as possible going forward. And we do, of course, have powers under Section 23 of the Scotland Act uh, to recover uh, evidence. For my part, I would expect specific documents to be supplied within the clear and precise timelines as set out by you, convener. And to that end, I would propose that we ask any sort of information, be they the Scottish Government, be they individuals, for specific documents or classes of documents. In essence, that we send them a list of what we require and also that the committee publishes that list. And I'd be more than happy to work with our, our clerks in that regard. Thank you. That, that's all from me, convener. Uh, thank you very much, Donald. Uh, Alex Cole-Hamilton, followed by Angela Constance. 
Thank you very much, Convener. I'd like to start where Donald Cameron left off. I share his concern about the very regrettable delays. Some were obviously uh, caused by uh, subjudicy aspects of the criminal trial. Um, some of them were caused by government capacity issues uh, due to the coronavirus pandemic. Nevertheless, um, a lot of what we've asked for has been prepared by Scottish Government officials already for the conduct of the judicial review. Um, and I feel that um, sometimes this committee has felt like a bit of an afterthought to the work of government. I, I don't think it's necessarily taken us our requests as seriously as it might. And I would remind the committee, you know, we have at our disposal those Section 23 powers to compel evidence. It's not uh, an optional uh, requirement. We, we could um, compel government to, to act in that way. I hope we don't have to. I hope we have better cooperation going forward. But, but we're not asking them to reinvent the wheel here. I'd like to reiterate uh, Donald Cameron's request to have witnesses heard on oath. I think that uh, the, this is a very important um, consideration of business and, and we will hear conflicting stories. And I think it's, it's vital that we have confidence in what we as a committee hear. Um, moving on to witnesses, I think in the approach paper that we have been handled, uh, that we've been given, sorry, um, that's broadly right. It, the approach paper covers three, I won't go into detail, but it covers three areas of witnesses around uh, the development of the policy, it touches on permanent secretary, the head of cabinet, other people like that, um, judicial review of complaints, um, and again, you know, I would like to see much of the written evidence that the government compiled for that, but uh, that all seems fine. And then indeed the, the Scottish Ministerial Code referral by the First Minister herself, which has a, a, a lengthy list attached to it. The one area I think we're missing in those witness um, baskets, if you like, is the peripheral process that happened alongside. We know certainly through the court trial that there was a parallel process, a, a less formal process in terms of handling complaints. For example, um, I would like to hear from the civil servant that um, apparently altered rotors uh, in response to anxieties around the former first minister's behaviour. That might not have been official protocol, but it was certainly a response to the anxieties that were held at the time. So I think we need to be sure that we are listening to or looking at the peripheral and informal um, handling of complaints as well as the application of the procedure. Um, and then finally, my, my last point would be on uh, the, the practicalities. I agree very much with Jackie Bailey. It is almost impossible to um, take what is potentially quite sensitive, quite controversial evidence in a format like this, when we have to stage manage the order in which questions uh, are asked, people are, are unable to intervene on one another one another um, and I so I think I agree the, the, the chamber um, we should seek to prevail on work with well to work in the chamber and then secondly that we meet with regularity I don't think this is the sort of thing that we can once we've started that we can pause or stall or anything like that and I would like to agree well I think we have agreed a start date of the 17th of August but thereafter a rhythm a momentum of meetings um, which will take us through to the meetings final thing on that I would say is that we need to go where the evidence takes us and the, the witness list that I agree we must publish today or tomorrow at the very latest uh, may be added to as new avenues of inquiry emerge for us. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Angela Constance followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, convener. I would like to start by echoing the comments of uh, some other colleagues that it is uh, time to proceed and it's time to proceed with pace. Um, like Margaret Mitchell, I think a uh, committee after summer recess should be meeting um, at least weekly, uh, but we may, of course, when we're discussing our work programme, want to discuss ways in which we could be um, progressing um, more quickly, um, if that's uh, possible. Um, my preference has always been not to be uh, questioning witnesses remotely or online. I just think that's particularly uh, problematic. I would want to do that in person, but that will, of course, uh, give uh, careful consideration um, to public health advice. Uh, and obviously, you know, we'll have to consider uh, par parliamentary uh, protocols uh, as well. But my distinct preference uh, is to proceed um, in uh, person. Again, as others have reiterated, uh, I believe as a committee we have fairly and clearly set out what we expect um, from government and others in terms of access to records and information. And it is important 
uh, that we should um, e expect uh, and indeed receive full cooperation uh, from the Scottish Government and others. Um, Convener, you mentioned earlier that um, we have begun to give consideration to publishing a statement uh, about how we will handle information. Um, and I think that's really important in terms of us as a committee clearly setting out our expectations and boundaries, uh, but also to give reassurance uh, to all uh, witnesses. Um, others, uh, Donald Cameron and Jackie Bailey, Alex Cole Hamilton, have touched upon what our um, initial uh, witness list uh, is likely to be like. I think it's a matter of public record already that we will start with the uh, permanent secretary. I think all I would like to add at this point is that given that the, the most senior people in government will be required to give evidence, uh, we should expect likewise from other external uh, organisations. And while we are possible, I think it's, we should endeavour for witnesses who are appearing in person to appear once. But I think as a committee, we also have to reserve that right to, to recall uh, witnesses as well. And the very final point, convener, is I think uh, making requests uh, for written information uh, over the summer is it will be very important in terms of helping us to establish um, our uh, a, a more definitive uh, list of witnesses. Uh, albeit that uh, at any point in time, committee uh, may wish to to add to the witness list. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. Can I have Alison Johnson, please, followed by Maureen Watt. Um, thank you, Convener. I think it was helpful, Convener, that you began by reminding us of our remit, which is, of course, to consider and report on the actions of the First Minister, the Scottish Government officials and SPADs um, in dealing with complaints about the, the former First Minister um, and the you know that th that will be considered under the Scottish government's handling of harassment complaints involving current and former ministers, and so on. So um, that very remit will, of course, affect who are appropriate witnesses. Um, I agree that we should call for evidence across the summer recess period, and I'd be, you know, I would welcome further discussion when we have that written evidence on who we then call for oral evidence, I think it would be helpful. And notwithstanding that, there are clearly um, senior officials and others that we will absolutely require to have in front of us. And um, I agree with, with colleagues' comments about where is the most appropriate and the safest place to do that. And I think we also have to bear in mind um, this committee, perhaps more than others, that we have legal restrictions and data restrictions when it comes to our handling of evidence and, of course, assuring well-being and privacy, perhaps, of potential witnesses. I very much look forward to beginning this work as soon as we possibly can in the next session. I think it's fair to say, while this is our first public session, so much work has been going on in the background. We're all very keen to proceed. And I think the Deputy Convener's points about how we might best do that are well made. I would you know, like us to meet weekly at the very least. I think we may be able to work more efficiently if we were to meet more frequently, so that we're not constantly referring to information that we've heard previously, so that it is a fresh and fluid inquiry and that we can all work um, optimally. I think just um, one other thing I'd, I'd like to say here. Um, one of my colleagues suggested speaking to previous permanent secretaries with regards to culture. And I know that we're going to consider whether we have a specific session on culture or whether it becomes apparent from evidence we receive both in writing and orally that culture is a big issue. Um, but I, I know we'll give, um, you know, it's just we're going to be considering and reporting on actions, but clearly culture is key to those actions. So I'd like to make sure that that culture is considered very carefully in our work. Um, I think that's that's all I would say. I do think clearly, um, you know, with colleagues, there's frustrations that in some cases it's taken a long time for the Scottish government to provide information. Obviously, some of that is unavoidable because of the pandemic. But some of it, um, I think, could be speeded up with 
with a bit more, yeah, per perhaps um, will and cooperation. And I look forward to seeing more of that as we move forward, convener. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. And Maureen Watt. Thank, thank you, convener. Um, I think a lot of what I would have said has been said. I think there is now um, a great degree of urgency in what we do. Um, there is a lot of interest, obviously, in this committee, and we have to work with the we have to work under the utmost um, integrity at all times. I agree that we should have an initial list of witnesses, um, and I think it is absolutely urgent that we put out a call for written evidence as soon as possible so that it comes in over the summer so that we can consider it over the summer before we have our next official meeting. I don't think we should be constrained by the initial list. I think we ought to look at the written evidence very carefully um, and see what other evidence comes in um, in relation to our quite specific remit, always having our remit in mind um, and uh, calling uh, other witnesses if required. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much, everyone. Uh, there seems to be a a broad agreement uh, of how we go forward from here. Um, I, I'd like to start, if I may, this public session. Um, so first of all, obviously, thanking you all for your contributions. Um, from what I see from the meeting we've just had just now and from previous meetings we've had and discussions we've had, we've agreed to work through the inquiry in three phases. Um, firstly, the actions taken in relation to the policy on handling harassment complaints involving current and former ministers, including development of policy and the handling of the complaints. And what's also come out quite strongly is a view that we should be looking at the culture of the organisation uh, within which that development and handling grew. Secondly, of course, there's the judicial review, and then there's the actions taken in relation to the Scottish Ministerial Code. We have already sought extensive written evidence from the Scottish Government and now seek written evidence uh, from a number of others. And Of course, all these requests for written evidence will be published uh, when they are issued. And I do take on board the comments we have um, heard about specific evidence uh, from the Scottish Government. We will begin meeting regularly uh, from August. Um, I think probably it would make sense to say at this moment that the plans would be weekly. However, we will look at how we can most efficiently um, and effectively operate this committee, and it may be um, that we look for other solutions and ways of doing that. I have taken on board very strongly uh, the understandable views that optimum would be to be able to meet physically um, and take evidence that way. I have also noted the committee's views that uh, we may wish to hear from the same witnesses on more than one occasion, so that we do get all the evidence uh, we require. So, of course, we will discuss uh, witnesses, further witnesses perhaps, in private session after this public session ends. I am pretty sure there will be more witnesses identified once we receive written evidence over the summer. Of course, the, the minutes of this meeting will set out all the decisions taken which can be reasonably shared at this stage. Soon after this meeting, uh, I will publish a statement on the approach to the inquiry on the committee's website, covering the issues I have just outlined, but in more detail. Um, so, Thank you, members. I know that officials will be working over the summer to prepare our papers for the return in August. And, um, I think it is pretty clear, and we are all agreed, that we will call the permanent secretary and relevant officials to give evidence in August. Oh, we will now move into private session to deliberate in more detail and reach decisions on the points members have just. And the public session is closed on that basis.